Today I spend most of my time understanding how can we secure a prosperous future for humanity in a situation where we're starting to hit the ceiling of what the planet can cope with. And I have the privilege of chairing something called the Earth League, which is a network of leading Earth system scientists who try and gather really all the knowledge we have on understanding our future on, on Earth. Mm -hmm. We are on average moving towards four degrees warming this century. And we haven't been in a four degree warmer world um, for the past four million years. So it's not as if it's a place we know very well. So give me one sort of picture of what the world may look like if we do not take action. Well, to begin with, for the past 12,000 years, temperatures are almost miraculously stable. In fact, average temperatures vary with only plus minus one degree Celsius during this entire period. This perfect pan planet with this perfect atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. And so, so let us then move upwards in temperature. Where are we right now? Well, today we're approaching one degree Celsius. Already at just 0.85 degrees, we're seeing faster than predicted impacts. This storm is so big, so vast, 60 million Americans will feel its power. We're in an historic drought. The world's coral reefs begin to collapse even before two degrees. So that's it's predicted to hit 1.5 to two degrees. So already now. So that's so already probably going to happen. That's already probably going to happen. At three, four degrees, we will have heat waves which make many regions in the world not livable any longer. Agriculture will be collapsing around the equator. That would take us beyond being able to responsibly feed humanity. What makes scientists so nervous is that we can reach a point where Earth takes over and start reinforcing warming. This is what we call tipping points, and, and the most obvious one is Greenland. Greenland, for the first time, is melting on its entire surface to a point where instead of being a white surface, becomes a dark surface, and suddenly, instead of being a cooler, becomes a self-heater. Because, because of the fact that the ice can no longer reflect back. Just the color change. Just the color change of the yeah. ice. Yeah. And suddenly, all these feedbacks start kicking in. Methane stuck under frozen permafrost thaws to a point where it starts getting released. And that, in turn, warms the planet even more, which releases more methane. Correct. That's if we don't take immediate action. Yes, that's business as usual. But the Paris Climate Summit that we are soon approaching in December, if world leaders come together properly, the window is open, but barely open, to transition back into a stable planet. Last time we had our climate summit, you couldn't say that we could go to scale on high-tech, clean energy solutions. But now in Paris, we can say so. We actually have the proof. You know, you wake up in Germany on Saturday morning, you're likely to get 30% of your electricity from solar and wind, and not from a few energy utilities, but from over two million citizens delivering to a grid. Denmark today produces over 100% some days of its electricity needs from wind. 100%, it's totally renewable. And remember that once you've invested in wind and solar, you actually have free energy forever. In countries like my own in Sweden, there was an enormous uprising among people, you know, from youth groups to civil society organizations, to the point that the prime minister announced three weeks back that Sweden will now become the world's first fossil fuel free nation. You know, I was, I was shocked at the way that propelled itself from below. I think we have tipped the world towards a sustainable future. The fear is, are we doing it too slowly?